Thank you, Mr. President. Look, I, I just addressed some of the, um, the points that were made by the government, and uh, <clears throat> I want to thank my colleagues, uh, Adam Searle and uh, Mr. Shoebridge, for their contributions. On the point about relying on other staff, Mr. President, there was a time, there was a point in time where, in these catastrophic events, and my colleague Adam Searle's right, it's certainly, and I made the point in my uh, opening remarks, it is not the worst storm we've ever had. I've got to tell you, I worked in those storms, and there were much worse storms, quite frequently, in fact, uh, and we would get supply on much quicker than it, than it has been. So the cop-out idea that there's been some sort of catastrophe that's unprecedented, one 30-year event, is just not true. But in terms of Osgood relying on other staff, there was a point in time where you could call in people from Essential Energy and Endeavour. That capacity is no longer there because those organisations have been gutted too. In fact, Essential Energy, which your party, the National Party, did a deal with to keep in public hands, has actually been gutted under government ownership because they didn't have the minimum job guarantees. Notwithstanding that, Osgood has got the minimum job guarantees, but the internal document, which my colleague Adam Searle referred to, I'm happy to table it, Mr President, says 3,238 full-time employees. Total headcount includes ongoing and temporary project roles, EA, meaning Enterprise Agreement, Senior Contract and Labor Hire. Now, the inflation of those figures reported to IPART, where they're saying they've got 3,800 or 900, which is above the legislative amount, includes, as, as Mr Searle pointed out, contractors. Now, I've got to tell you something. Contractors who don't spend the majority of time on the network and actually shouldn't be accounted in the minimum figures, do not restore supply. So when Osgrid employs Lend-Lease or one of those companies to do a project arrangement on building a greenfield substation, assets, those people cannot be used on the front line to deploy to restore supply. So the fact is that we have the Premier stating that the numbers were greater than they were before privatisation, mistruth, patent mistruth, a storm where people were left without power for a week, and an organisation which used to be publicly owned and resourced no longer able or having the capacity to give pay people those basic needs of electricity. And then those horror stories about that poor paraplegic pe person being off for a week. It's not good enough. And unfortunately, the New South Wales people have to suffer now, and perhaps it'll turn into such a political issue that we might have to buy the thing back or intervene in the market to make sure that people do get the supply. It doesn't work. There is no competitive market in electricity out there. The only way to make sure is for the government to step in and ensure that those job numbers are there so, people, so these, these, these organisations have the adequate capacity to restore supply. I commend the motion. Um, the job numbers need to be retained and the job cuts need to stop.